Have you ever smoked weed before? <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 moments from RuPaul's Drag Race season 13. Yep, they do, Ross. They let I her churn that. butter all day. Someone I don't think got a fair chance last week. Jennifer Lewis. Yeah. Not Jennifer Lawrence. Gen no, no, not Jennifer Lawrence. For this list, we're looking at the most memorable, emotional, and gag-worthy moments from season 13 of the show. If you're not caught up yet, here is your spoiler alert. So, what was your favorite season 13 moment? Let us know in the comments. All right, start your engines and let's get into it. Number 10, getting the pork chop. Pork chop. I don't like pork chops. Much to our delight, RuPaul kicked off season 13 by throwing everybody a curveball. The contestants arrived gradually and were called to lip sync for their lives against one another in pairs, with one group placed in a trio. What? One queen won while the other got the pork chop. Obviously, we spent the entire episode wondering what that meant as the losing queens gathered at the pork chop loading dock. Uh, Rue? Yes? You do realize you just eliminated half of the cast, right? Oh. And that's not all. In the second episode, the losing lip syncers had to vote off a fellow queen. Elliot with two T's was chosen. It's been a lovely 15 minutes with all of you. <laughs> They thought they had eliminated her, but she actually joined the winner's circle instead. Hello. Needless to say, the eventual meeting between the two groups was interesting. If it isn't the B squad. Oh, no. <laughs> Number nine, congratulations and phenomenon maxi challenges. Congratulations, you're number one. Following the season premiere, we got to know both groups of queens, without having to say goodbye to anybody. During the second episode, the members of the winner's circle from week one each wrote a verse and performed a choreographed dance to RuPaul's song Congratulations. Elliot with two T's, Olivia Lux, and Simone were among the queens who caught fans' attention in this maxi challenge. The name's Simone and I'm here for the throne. <laughs> Then, in episode three, the first week's losing queens, or B Squad, repeated the exercise. This time, the song was Rue's Phenomenon. Drag, it's all over the world. It's a phenomenon. We got to see Denali and Rose's talent on display, and realized that this group was full of insanely fierce competitors. The winner is Rose! Yeah. We were living for the star power on that stage. In short, this performance was a phenomenon. Number 8. Candy Muse vs. Tamisha Iman Tensions between queens inevitably flare on Drag Race. This year, things got heated in Untucked after Tamisha mentioned disliking some of the queens, which Candy took to heart. Let me be arrogant, baby! It does not change what I said. I said what I said! It didn't get much better as the queens discussed the fight in the workroom either. But the arguing had to take a back seat because it was time for the discomentary. As they learned the choreography, Tamisha revealed that she had an ostomy bag in her confessional and explained that this made the moves more challenging. It's not just the cancer. I'm here with an ostomy bag on my stomach. When both she and Candy fell flat during the performance, they found themselves lip syncing against one another. While Candy was victorious, there was no ill will between the two as Tamisha sashayed away. They even hugged. Number 7. Denali and Kimora Hall's Lip Sync Denali and Kimora Hall's lip sync to Crystal Waters' 100% Pure Love was, in a word, epic. Kimora had a hard time as her dress was insanely fitted with a train that went on for days. But it didn't matter because Denali came to play. Fantasy, <laughs> she exceeded everyone's expectations and slayed from beginning to end. As we watched Drag Race's newest lip sync assassin really blossom, we forgot about literally everything else that was happening around us. Denali delivered pure fun and entertainment with everything from her voguing to her splits to her clever and thoughtful moves that match the song's lyrics. Oh. This is sure to be a lip sync we all watch over and over again in the years to come. Number 6. Time for a ball. Let the bad ball begin. 
The Ball Challenge always gives us some amazing runway looks. Season 13's theme, The Bag Ball, did just that with its three categories. First, there was Mixed Bag, where the contestants incorporated the word bag into their outfit's concept. Up next was the Money Bags look, which was about opulence. Finally, we had the Bag Ball Eleganza, which called for a high fashion number made of, you guessed it, bags. Got Mick. She is a strapping young queen. Notably, Got Mick and Utica really stood out with their creative looks and owned the runway. I am so campy. <laughs> I'm walking down the runway in this sleeping bag couture. Conversely, Lala Ree struggled with a final look that was messy and unfinished. Honestly, Nicole Byer's face said it all. However, we would say that Lala more than made up for her disastrous ball showing with her amazing lip sync against Joey J. Number 5. Movie Fun gotcha. <laughs> Grab some popcorn, get comfortable, and turn on the RuPaul Mark channel. If you love a good corny holiday flick like us, this was the challenge for you. The queens were divided into three teams, and each group starred in a different movie. Misery Loves Company, God Loves Flags, or April Fools Rush In. The joke's on you if you don't fall in love in April Fools Rush In. We were on the floor laughing, and a big part of why was Simone. I own 51% of the flag factory. Between her hilarious acting in God Loves Flags and her perfect do rag train on the runway, it's no wonder she was named the winner of the week. A do rag is a part of black culture, and I want to celebrate that on the stage. Plus, with her pronunciation of Flag Factory in this challenge and her soda pop commercial tagline later in the season, Simone cemented herself as the queen of catchphrases. Is your blood sugar low? Number four, the Rusical. Ice bucket challenge is posts of me planking, sending a cat meme to get the world laughing. This season, the Rusical was all about social media. Despite getting a part she didn't really want, Denali brought the Russian bot to life hilariously alongside Got Mick. We want to ruin you, S.A. Plus, Rosé really showed everyone what a well-rounded performer she is and easily secured the win. Don't say what I can post, you know I'm stunning. All people want sex, not body shunning. Her singing and dancing were flawless, and she completely embodied Foxy with her skilled acting. By contrast, Simone seemed discouraged by the challenge, and sadly, it translated on stage. I'm your favorite act, I make you look good. As for Candy Muse's performance, it simply lacked refinement. Wanna get hired, wanna be desired. Thus, they were named the bottom two, and delivered a lively lip sync to Fifth Harmony's boss. boss initially eliminating Candy, RuPaul declared both queens safe in a last-minute pivot, and the double Shantae of season 13 was born. Candy, Candy, wait! Stop. I'm not ready for you to go. <laughs> Number 3. The Snatch Game It's no secret that the Snatch Game is consistently one of the most highly anticipated challenges Drag Race has to offer. And this season was further proof of why. Great assets, turn them over and you can make a Benedict. While Utica's Bob Ross, Elliot with two T's Rue McClanahan, and Olivia Lux's Tabitha Brown really flop, there were queens who brought the house down with their celebrity impersonations. Hi, Harriet Tubman. Uh -huh. I see all this room full of white people up here now. I got nerves. Yep. Namely, Simone's risky Harriet Tubman paid off, Denali embodied Jonathan Van Ness amazingly, and Rosé utilized her Scottish roots to hilariously revive Mary Queen of Scots. You know what they say, go underground for a few years, you're probably gonna lose a wee no, that great no start it. <laughs> I say that all the time. Most importantly, Got Mick's winning impression of Paris Hilton was so gorge that only Paris herself could have competed with it. Please welcome Paris Hilton. Hey Rue, how's it going? Just let me know when the cameras are rolling and we'll kill it. Well, we've started, the cameras are rolling. Oh, oh shit, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> Sorry. Needless to say, this episode was definitely worth the wait. Number two, Simone's powerful look. I really wanted to take this opportunity to do some activism in my drag. The queens didn't back away from candidly discussing important subject matter this season. 
namely the Black Lives Matter movement. That actually happened like two minutes away from my house. What? what? Like, oh my yeah. God, girl. Like at the Wendy's that I go to on a daily basis. This situation happened and it kind of scared me because I'm like, that could have been me. Simone in particular was vocal about the importance of using her platform to display black excellence and speak out about injustice. That is precisely what she did throughout the season. There's a level of trauma that comes with that shit. So even with corona going on, I felt immediately compelled to be involved in protests here in Los Angeles because enough is enough. Things need to change. Notably for the Fascinator runway theme, Simone donned a gorgeous white number that carried a real statement. When she turned around, we saw bullet holes in her dress and the words say their names written on her Fascinator in reference to the Black Lives Matter movement. And as I turn around, you see on the back, there are two bullet holes. And I put my hands up, don't shoot. It's not a moment, it is a movement. We need to continue to say their names. She also put her hands up to represent being unarmed as she exited the runway. This was a striking ensemble with an incredibly powerful message that Simone delivered perfectly. And Simone, I wanna thank you for bringing such a powerful message to the runway. Welcome. I know it's been a long season, so I won't waste any more of your time. Without further ado, let's walk through some fierce honorable mentions, and then we will name our top season 13 drag race moment. Tamisha Iman's drag dynasty. Candy Iman Dupree was one of her drag daughters. One of my daughters, she has this famous video. She's performing as Superwoman. Wait. Stop it, Tandy. Tandy's my daughter. Yeah, Tandy's my that's daughter. Your daughter? Yeah, that's, Are you kidding me? Yeah, Tandy's my daughter. I'm so shocked right now. Tandy is the one that made the lasting impression. Celebrity video visits. Anne Hathaway and Scarlett Johansson virtually visited the workroom. Hi, please. And Hathaway, oh my God. The Princess Diaries. Ella Enchanted. Les Mis. Double Wars Prada? A documentary special. We learned about the Queen's experience filming during the age of coronavirus. Drag Race is kind of a little bit of an escape during this crazy time. I think it's really needed right now. We can still thrive, you just have to be safe, and we can still make really dope art and get the job done. Candy Muse and Rosé's performances. They brought the laughs to the Nice Girls Roast. Yo, RuPaul is so old, Jurassic Park brought back memories. <laughs> RuPaul is so old, I told her to act her own age, bitch. She died. Emotional moments on stage. RuPaul and Got Mick had a moving talk. You've given them a, a roadmap, and I watched you in this competition grow and expand. I am so proud of you, and I know your parents are proud of you too. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Simone takes the win. The winner of RuPaul's Drag Race, America's next drag superstar is after being treated to some gag-worthy music videos during the reunion episode, we were even more excited than before to see how the season of Drag Race would come to a close. And the grand finale did not disappoint. Namely, the beautiful tribute to Chi Chi Devane was a truly moving moment that fans of the show won't soon forget. Plus, from the stunning opening ball looks to La La Ree being named Miss Congeniality, there was plenty to love. It all led up to the highly anticipated lip sync Smackdown for the Crown, which saw the one and only Ebony Enchantress Simone take home the grand prize. After slaying all season long, this sickening queen got the crown she so deserved. I told y'all not to let the smooth say fool you. I have a question for you. What song do you get stuck in your head more? Congratulations? or phenomenon? And whose verse is the one that's always stuck in your head? I would love to hear about it in the comments. So let's break down season 13 in the comment section, or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram what you think, at Rebecca Brayton, or on my YouTube channel. See ya. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.